In the first video of this series, we discussed some topics that needed to be grasped before we could delve into how evolution actually works. Now with that video out of the way, we can proceed to what I consider the first step of evolution, mutations. Mutations are the primary way in which genes are modified, and genes are sequences of nucleotides that code for a protein, which has a certain function. Nucleotides are the rungs, as it were, of the DNA ladder, and there are four types, adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. In RNA, thymine is replaced with uracil. During replication, mutations occur due to the imperfection of such enzymes as DNA polymerase that, despite their high copying fidelity, can sometimes incorrectly copy nucleotides. Mutations can also be produced by mutagens, such as radiation that can result in major disconformities. Some organisms, though, use gamma-ray radiation to their advantage, converting the rays into metabolic energy through a process called radiotrophism. Another way that genes can be modified is through genetic recombination, where chimeric alleles can be produced by chromosomes exchanging segments with their respective homologous pair. Anyway, mutations come in different types, insertion or deletion, point or frame shift. An insertion occurs when a nucleotide is added to a sequence and a deletion is the removal of a nucleotide. A point mutation is when a nucleotide is switched out with another. In a codon sequence that codes for the amino acid leucine, the sequence might be CTT. For reference, a codon is a set of three nucleotides that codes for an amino acid. If, however, a point mutation replaces the second T with a C, then what amino acid do we get? Interestingly, we still get leucine because of the redundancy, or degeneracy as it's sometimes called, of DNA. That means a single amino acid can be coded for by more than one codon sequence. In leucine's case, it can be coded by CTT, CTC, CTA, CTG, TTA, or TTG. The amino acid tryptophan, on the other hand, which is in poultry, has only one codon, TGG. Lastly, a frameshift mutation is one that causes the reading frame of DNA to change one way or the other. Take this sentence, the fat cat ate the rat. If we were to add a second letter A to the word fat, then the statement would read thusly. In this case, the sequence has become nonsense. Often when this happens to an amino acid sequence, the protein is non-functional. However, when everything goes right in the protein coding process, or at least right enough, the codons produce amino acids that build proteins. The process of the enzyme RNA polymerase creating a messenger RNA sequence with the nucleotides complementary to a DNA sequence is called transcription. The messenger RNA then leaves the nucleus, which is where the DNA is stored in eukaryotic cells, and is acted upon by transfer RNA. The transfer RNA matches each messenger RNA codon with a respective anticodon, and with the help of ribosomes, this produces amino acids. The amino acids build up until the necessary protein is compiled, which then does its job. Now that we've discussed the different types of mutations, let's talk about their effects. The effect of a mutation can be silent, harmful, or beneficial, and we'll take each of these in order. A silent mutation is one that cannot be selected for or against and has no noticeable effect. Our earlier example with leucine is one such mutation. Even though a point mutation occurred, it had no effect on the amino acid produced. Next, harmful mutations are the ones people hear about the most because they are often the most visible. They include Down syndrome, cystic fibrosis, color blindness, hemochromatosis, hemophilia, phenylketonuria, Tay-Sachs disease, etc. Lastly, there are the beneficial mutations, that is, these are mutations that produce a positive effect for the carrier. Ask a creationist if these exist, and creationists will swear up and down that they don't. However, the fact is that beneficial mutations do exist and have been observed. One example is lactose tolerance in humans of European descent. For most humans, they lose the ability to metabolize lactose after infancy, but humans of European descent gain the ability to metabolize lactose through adulthood. Another example is a mutation in the LRP5 gene that increases bone density, causing breakages to be much less likely. Or the apolipoprotein A1 gene that was mutated in a family in Milan, Italy, causing them to metabolize higher levels of cholesterol without harmful side effects. Numerous more examples can be found in the article Examples of Beneficial Mutations and Natural Selection, link in the description below, and elsewhere online. 
But interspersed with them, you'll find creationist articles like The Myth of Beneficial Mutations by the Creation Studies Institute or Are There Beneficial Mutations by Answers in Genesis. So, creationists categorically deny all beneficial mutations and, to quote the Answers in Genesis article, say something like this, quote, Keep in mind that beneficial information-gaining mutations are a necessary mechanism of molecules-to-man evolution, so focusing on any potential for this is essential for evolutionists. What doesn't seem to be often addressed is the vast amount of data to the contrary. But even if there were a clearly beneficial mutation, this would by no means prove the mechanism for evolution." End quote. The article, authored by Georgia Purdom, doesn't actually contain any data to the contrary, but anyway. Thus, the point is that mutations and genetic recombination affect our genes and they can build up over time to result in new structures and functions. It is important to remember, though, that evolution isn't just a series of mutations building up. There are other mechanisms that affect how mutations are dispersed through the population. These will be investigated in the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.